Hi. First, I would like to thank Award for this opportunity, for this great event today, and all of you who's actually there. If we were not there, there would be no conference, so thank you. All right, konnichiwa, hello, I'm Frederick. I'm, uh, well, he actually said it. Uh, I'm creative director at Locomotive, uh, which I founded with uh, my good friend Jean-Francois, just here back in 2006. Hello guys, I'm Jean-Francois. I'm one of the co-founders and VP operation. I'm happy to work every day with talented individuals who are passionate about design, digital, and communication. So for us, for those who don't know about Locomotive, we've Sorry. prepared a quick reel about our last work uh, of the last year, and actually a bit of who we are. Let's roll. Together with our superstar team of less than 25 employees, we do real business in the digital era. As we grow and take on more and more exciting projects, we have an authentic vision and perspective, uh, working with real company, real challenge, and bringing them solutions through web design and digital strategy. Last year at the award conference in Amsterdam, we had the pleasure of showing you uh, our agency culture and process. This year, we're excited to discuss our reality and future as a small digital agency in a Flickr era where people move on faster than you can swipe left on a dating app. We'll share honest, grounded business advice and solution from our experience, including facing real problem and our vision of the future. But let's be clear, we don't have all the answers. Since we started Locomotive, we've been working hard, learning, creating and figuring out a lot of things on the fly by doing our own work and just taking the leap. The, tre the tremendous honor of being here with you today is a reminder that we've done some things well and that we're proud of. But we've also made our share of mistakes. After all, who hasn't? I haven't. Just joking. Oh. I make a ton of them. But seriously, every day we face new challenges, some of the same issue that you might also be grappling with. So today is a great opportunity for all of us to look at these questions. Thank you for coming. It means a lot to us. It really does. Thank you. We realize that some of what we have to say might not fit in everybody's way of thinking. Here in Japan, we're outsider, and we appreciate the culture, and we respect the way you do things. So if something resonates for you, that's great. If not, that's OK, too. Look, we're a couple of French Canadians who listens to our guts and since the beginning decided that for us, success means more than profit or fame. For us, success has always been about the long-term value of the people we work with and what they bring to the table. We're talking about our clients, but our colleagues, too. Because relationships are worth a lot. Just ask anyone who's ever tried online dating app. It's not always all shiny and bright. Right, Jeff? That's right. We're both happily married, so our <laughs> swiping days are thankfully over. Yes. But that wasn't always the case. OK, now with that, we've got that straightened out. Let's go to the real, real talk. We'll talk today about three lessons. First, we're going to let you know about how we, Locomotive, find our fit with clients and colleagues. Second, we'll give you some insights on how we do great work with limited resources. And third, what's next? Let's ex explore the unsolved mystery of how we can all build this lasting groundwork for the future of our industry. All right, take it away, Jean-Francois. 
Merci, Fred. That's a definite swipe right for me. So let's get right into it and talk about finding your fit. Here we go. Finding the right fit with client has always been important to us. We love to work with other remarkable organizations who share our way of thinking. Like the old saying goes, it takes two to tango. Finding your fit is about both parties. What is the client is looking for? What is the agency is looking for? That both sides did their own work before the first date. So how do you find the right fit with clients? There we say an exceptional fit. Let's clarify precisely what we mean by fit. For us, fit has three elements. The creative fit, what's the vision of the project? Does it match our creative style? The human fit, how do you value the relationship? How do you protect your team from the crazy clients? And finally, the business fit. Are we doing it for the money? Are we doing it for the visibility? Is it for a great cause? That being said, here's how we found our fit. One of the biggest part is one tiny word, no. What, really, no? Yeah, you're gonna learn to say no, Freddie. Not always, but if it doesn't resonate, better not to take it on and only go as often as possible with projects that fit. When you say yes to a client who doesn't fit, you're missing clients who fit by default. Learn to say no to the wrong one so you can say yes to the right one. Don't compromise, be honest and true to yourself. That's where the blind trust comes in, in having the guts to say no to project when, when something isn't clicking. And you have to do it without knowing what else might be coming your way. It is scary to turn down project. You really have to believe in your team, in your efforts so far, and in your vision and values. You have to trust without any proof that good project will come. And guess what? They usually do. I believe in karma. The point is, whether the answer is yes or no, we say it with courage and awareness. Now, this doesn't mean we run around emoting all day. It just means we care deeply about how we and our employees feel about a project, which we humbly believe is one of the things that makes our work stand out, win awards, and earn the honor of being here with you today. You can see there's a duality here in terms of business approach. We work with both emotion and logic, feelings and fact, instinct and data, trust and caution. The cool thing, the, the cool thing is, if you approach this core idea of having the courage to say no, from an emotional or mathematical point of view, you get the same exact answer. Nobody, especially a small agency, has unlimited time and energy to do everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. Part of the find your fit concept is, yours, is use your time wisely. And to trot out on the old dating app comparison again, just don't go out with the, old, with the wrong person just to fail your Saturday night. Then you'll be booked when the good one calls. That's true, good advice. So to, to sum up, basically, uh, when you, you have to choose clients, projects, employee, anything really, the fit has to be three-way, creative, human, and business. And learn to say no is really the way to go for us. So that's what we do. We don't always look at statistics. Sometimes it's just more of a feeling. I personally think that many agencies into big data right now are starting to forget the emotional side of, of decision making. And when we use emotion, energy, and certainly art, after all, we all much, pretty much do design here, it always serves a logical purpose. So don't forget, decisions should always be taken with both emotion and logic in mind to get the perfect match. So emotion plus logic equals it's a match. All right, now, just like Einstein and Adele here, they find their match, happy. Let's say that you found your fit, that you have the client in the shop. What's next? You have to do a project together. How you take that client, that scenario, that budget, and turn it into a successful project? Which brings us to the second lesson from the trench of the small digital agency world, how to do more with less. Hmm. More true every year. The fit is the initial desire to work together. It doesn't guarantee a successful project. Once you match, what happens next? Well, the reality of a small agency, we've learned to make the most of our resources and do amazing things with less. We're going to bring you into some highlights of our process to show you how we do more with limited resource as a small team, sharing some insight of what works and what actually needs improvement. Here are some of our tricks to do more with less. Communicate better. Sounds easy. Talk to the human, not the machine. Don't be scared to talk to the client, call them, show your face, have a conversation or even a meeting. We've learned that it's so important to prioritize direct human contact and we encourage all our employees to do the same. Collaborate. 
get the clients involved in the process. I mean, really. Start by doing work session and learn what they want in a respectful way. We often say that we have half of the answer and the client owns the other half. I don't know what they need. They actually know what they need. And our job is to poke around and get the truth about to learn about their process and business. You take a lot of information, you ask questions, and more importantly, you stay humble. Because no agency does a great work, work in alone. Strategic workshop, including the client, might seem like an extra investment sometimes, but it's actually more productive for us and save loads of time in the long run. Thank you. It also helps us to identify potential problems before they arise. Find the purpose, the why, and lay down the story line for each moving piece of the project in order to meet and manage the client's expectation. Next slide. All right. Okay, guys, N nurture the relationship, bond with the people, not just the business. And it's important to go beyond your single contact and build authentic relationship with different people in the business because you never know where they're going to end up working. Learn to say bravo to clients, to colleagues, yourself, your barista, everyone, really. This one is close to my heart because a lot of good things can come from a pat on, on the back. Maybe it's a personality thing, but I believe in going out of your way to say bravo and commend someone for excellent service is worth the extra effort. We're emotionally driven human, and I encourage everyone to show appreciation for a job well done. Know your clients and where to focus to stay on budget and on track. Here's where we get to apply the concept of emotion and logic. The client will always want more. You know that. The client will always want actually everything. To stay on track, use your intuition and emotional power to find out what the client is aiming and identify where to hit artists for maximum impact. Be part of the solution. Hi. Next slide. Be part of the solution. The impact of finding the right fit means that you can be part of the solution. You want to choose projects and clients that actually fits within your team's capabilities and the project they're motivated to work with. We invest in keeping the, our employees happy and appreciated so our team is efficient and know how to work together to deliver a great result on time. Keep the partner involved. At Locomotive, all three partners are in the mix of every single project. We're there every day working with the team, making sure every project is on track. All right. Now that we've shared some of our fundamental principles, here's are some specific tools or trends to get your hands dirty. We're really not reinventing the wheel here, but here's a few things that help us, locomotive, to deliver a bit more with less. Own your style. Uh, or if you run an agency, find the right talent and keep it. Define a graphical or creative style that feels true to yourself, a system and a design process that is convenient for your type of work, that suits your team's need. Challenge your creative process and infuse your team with always the aim of beating your last best work. Give and take. Always stay curious. Can't stress that enough. Develop your own toolbox or make time for your developer to do so and learn new tools along the way. We don't always have to start from scratch. There's so many things available online that we can use to start with. The Google Developer Tools, for example, offer endless solutions to make great things with less. Uh, the, the past year, we've been playing with text-to-speech, augmented reality, getting our ways around uh, to experiment uh, machine learning into your project, and much more. But most importantly, Find your voice and share what you learn with your peers through GitHub, blogging, or collaborating through network, through awards like this conference today, depending on the kind of insight you're looking to share. So here's a two example. Uh, recently, we've shared a piece of our toolbox. Uh, we could say part of our secret sauce to the public, the locomotive scroll. So there's so many things you can do, lerp effect, moving objects, uh, managing parallax, and much more. So we have an open communication with the people who use it, and you can find uh, the address just there. You can snap. We'll give you time to snap the thing. Oh, too late. Sorry. Give it back to you later. Uh, another project, uh, Editorial New, with our good friends at Pangram, Pangram Foundry. I think it's just playing with uh, the variable fonts and all the capabilities uh, that the, the variable fonts have uh, to expand the boundaries of type animation and rendering. So also, there's a few links if you want to get some uh, and play with variable fonts. 
So what's next? The project has been delivered. Will there be a, a second date, or was it just a one-time thing? Does it have to end, or can it continue? Will the client and agency go back to swiping for a new collaborator or make the effort to invest and build something? We don't have the answers. I think in the small agency world, we're like serial data in this scenario. At least Locomotive, we do a lot of great projects that go super well, that last one day, then everybody moves on to the next match. If the status quo is more of a dating situation, how can we as an industry change that? Or more importantly, do we want to change that? If so, how can we get better at creating a fit that will last? Or is the digital agency world destined for serial dating and it's, okay, it's just okay like that? Maybe there's no right answer. Maybe the question is, which way do we want to go as a business? Perhaps it's in human nature to always want something new. And yet, there's value in magic in business relationship that endures. Both sides have to be ready, willing, and able to do the work that make it happen. Feels like we each have a choice. A blue pill or red pill. I can choose the art, making the effort to build something strong with a great client, which means putting in the hard time, sometimes uncomfortable work over time. Or choose the easy, swipe right, and start over with a new prospect every time. No vulnerability requ required. The options are there, no matter which pill we pop. I have an idea. Let's ask the audience. What do you think, friend? Pretend that you have to make a choice for your business development and the way you approach client's relationship. Do you want to be a player extraordinaire or a hopeless romantic? Please raise your hand here for the player extraordinaire. Those who value, uh, like, more, put more time and resource into finding dynamic new ways, uh, dynamic new projects with loads of great new clients. So who is the player extraordinaire who likes to go on or is actually going on on projects to another? Okay, now raise your hand for the hopeless romantic, those who invest time and resources into building something that endure with the best client's relationship that you actually already have. All right, not everyone answer, I see, so we'll come to that later. So how do we've you keep been, them on? We've been working at making better, at making our business relationship last over time, but it's a challenge that can sometimes feel tougher than expected. So how do you keep them on your boat, Fred? Stay relevant, adapt, challenge the client, get fresh idea, and always treat him as a new prospect on a first date. Take responsibility. This means so many things. In a nutshell, we would humbly advise you to take good care of your clients. Check in on them and their needs, keep the communication open, but most importantly, take responsibility for your fault and mistakes. So we're going to try real hard to do that, Fred, right? You bet. If none of that works, we can always blame the client. The classic agency move, if something goes wrong with the project, it's always the client's fault, right, Jeff? But is it really? What about some introspection? Have we always been irreproachable? How can we increase our chance of a better outcome? So, in the end, it's not always the client's fault. We might have some work to do on ourselves. Always. Before we go, we have one more thing. Looking towards the future, an increasingly automated and AI-driven industry, where does a small agency like Locomotive fit? What's the value do we bring to the table? We feel our value is our creative and human side. Professional human advice over automation remains the real value of tomorrow's agency. Part of that means finding creative ways to put automation to good use in order to help humans to, more, to work and create more efficiently together. We hope to discover that by grounding these ideas in our culture, project, process, and in the meaningful environment we create for our client, whether they're here for one project or more. So in conclusion, here's one thing we're, we are sure about. Let's swipe right for a future of open collaboration, of being vulnerable and sharing our challenges so we can all build this future together and figure it out. We've seen some shy hands, so we've prepared something for you because maybe someone don't like to say they're player extraordinaire. So we prepare a small survey, little things to, to, to uh, get your answers on who is the player extraordinaire and uh, who is the hopeless romantic. We'd love to find out what you're all thinking. So the address is locomotive.ca slash Tokyo. If you'd like to answer our one question survey, we'd love to get your thought about that. Thank you very much. Arigato See you at the party. Much.